information about Kwanzaa. The religious myth is that probably the most common misunderstanding of the holiday. In this, interestingly, in stark contrast, one of the things that was fascinating to learn was the vital role that the black church played in Kwanzaa's growth. Black churches around the country, especially those rooted in black liberation theology, churches like Pastor Jeremiah Wright's Trinity United in Chicago, Pastor Willie Wilson's Union Temple in Washington, D.C., or Pastor Frederick Haynes' Friendship West in Dallas, introduced Kwanzaa into their congregations and incorporated its principles into their sermons. Hip-hop plays an instrumental role in Kwanzaa's growth in the 80s and early 90s. Artists like Dead Prez and Chuck D discussed how hip-hop made them culturally aware and educated them. Stickman from Dead Prez talked about learning about Kwanzaa from hip-hop. Chuck D talked about promoting Kwanzaa through Public Enemy and how they influenced a generation of African Americans to celebrate themselves. Additionally, Kwanzaa and hip-hop are both African American cultural inventions with strong elements of continental African cultures. While Kwanzaa is an African American and Pan-African holiday, it can be and is celebrated by people of different races. Dr. Maluna Karinga, the founder of Kwanzaa, explains that other people can and do celebrate it, just like other people participate in Cinco de Mayo, besides Mexicans, Chinese New Year, besides Chinese, and Native American powwows, besides Native Americans. Can you give the person sitting next to you a high five, please? That gesture <laughs> came into widespread use only a few decades ago, and it came out of the African American culture. It reaches back to Africa. When slave traders captured Africans and brought them in chains to be sold into slavery in the American South, the traditions and culture of the Africans became, came along too. Much of the culture was suppressed by the southern landowners, but it survived and emerged in unexpected ways. One of those ways was the African American spiritual, which reflects not only the longing for freedom, but also tradition of African American and African tribal music. When Dvorak visited America in the late 1800s, he decided that the new direction for classical music would be found in the songs of black America. His new world sympathy was written in the spirit of that music. In other words, he borrowed it. Dr. Ron Karinga, who I previously mentioned, invented Kwanzaa at the height of the black power movement. He borrowed Swahili, Swahili terms like Canera, the candle holder, and Kwanzaa, which means fresh fruits, and first fruits. He borrowed African symbols like the straw mat that is placed under the other Kwanzaa symbols. The straw mat is used everywhere I've been in Africa, where they have been in Africa, in Liberia. Large sections of straw matting are used on walls for housing and as barriers around construction sites. Dr. Karinga intended the straw mat to be a reminder of African folkways and traditions. He also used American symbols like an ear of corn, for example, which represents children. Born as native to America as the black Americans born in this country. How appropriate to combine symbols of Africa and America to create a new tradition that is unique to African Americans. Kwanzaa has been criticized as not a real tradition. That, this criticism is interesting. It is not only an old tradition that can be accepted and embraced, but what is a tradition the first time it's carried out? Maybe it's just a good idea or a meaningful gesture. Dr. Karinga's good idea was to give American, African Americans a tradition not blighted by Christianity's role in the oppression of American slaves, yet one that would not require black Christians to reject or abandon their traditional observance of Christmas. Kwanzaa is also a year-end celebration, a winter solace observance that is well placed here in the northern hemisphere as it would not be in Africa. It's a tradition that unites values of family and community with a political message of the need for economic strength as the path to economic justice of reflecting its genesis in this turbulent 60s as of today. Because I am not black American, I can't experience life the way African Americans experience it. I can't claim Kwanzaa as my racial entitlement. But because I'm the parent of African American children and an African American grandchild, I can honor the Kwanzaa tradition and celebrate it with them. And inevitably, I found in Kwanzaa many values that I want to carry from the old year to the new, with a resolve to work them more completely into the fabric of my life. Family, community, unity, purpose, self-termination, creativity, and faith. As I speak these words to my son, I yearn to make them more fully mine. 
We have the freedom to make and break New Year's resolutions. What is freedom? In, in many respects, it is the freedom to determine the direction of our lives. We'll never have complete freedom. There are always boundaries. But we do have the freedom to choose our mental and spiritual direction, to expand our limit or limit our activities, to bring meaning to our lives or ignore the need for it. In the next few minutes, choose a single Kwanzaa value that has meaning for you. The seven principles are listed there. Unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, and faith. Think of a New Year's resolution that, that expresses your value. For me, for next year, my resolution is faith. I want to work within myself to become more spiritual for me, myself, and more spiritual with other people that I meet in here at church. Anybody else? Do any of those resonate with anybody else? Yes, Minnie. Mine is the same as yours. Good. Greater faith, work on myself, become a better human being. Anybody else have any of these? I like the purpose. It's something you to drive towards, some goal to have. You know, make progress towards. I like purpose also, for what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I like creativity. I don't know why, I just do. You're very creative. I want self-determination and creativity. Good. Good. Anybody else? Yes, Sarah. Purpose, because I'm graduating and I need to figure out what mine is. <laughs> <laughs> purpose, because I'm retiring and I need to figure out what <laughs> sharing with us your New Year resolutions that reflect Kwanzaa values. There are resolutions that remain unspoken and others that we may think of after we leave this place. Let us rejoice together in our freedom to choose new directions for our own lives. Let us not forget those who are without the freedom, who can't make their own choices, those oppressed by injustice, by poverty, by lack of education, by economic enslavement. Let us remember in the words of Desmond Tutu, Bishop of South America. South Africa. That liberation is costly. It needs unity. We must hold hands and refuse to be divided. We must be ready. Let us be part of that unity, part of that struggle for liberation. For no matter where or when, let us resolve today to be united with all who yearn for freedom. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the Kwanzaa candles. Just a this is the time of year when Kwanzaa comes, follows closely by the birthday of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. The mes message spoken quietly in African-American homes at Kwanzaa is shouted to the world three weeks later at the birthday of the Reverend King. Even if you are not African-American, there's a lot that the candles of Kwanzaa have to teach us. Kwanzaa candles are seven. Three red, a black, and three green. The black candle is a celebration of being black of the unique and special qualities each person brings to the whole family or community. It is a candle of the present of today. The three green candles are vision candles, candles of hopes, dreams, and promises for the future. The red candles are struggle candles, past candles, candles the color of blood, candles the color of courage. All seven candles help African Americans to remember a long struggle against injustice, against unfairness, and to promise each other that they will continue to work together against injustice. As a white person, I can't be part of the remembering or the promise. I want to honor the struggle for justice by speaking a history, a story of a people which is not often told enough in our society. Jamestown. You represent the children of those people born between 1625 and 1650, and you remain enslaved. You represent the children's children of those Jamestowns born between 1650 and 1675, and you remain enslaved. You represent the children's children's children of those Jamestown slaves born between 1675 and 1700, and many of your own generation remain enslaved. You represent the children's 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 children of those Jamestown slaves born between 1700 and 1725.
Many white people have come and taken land for their own towns and cities. The cities and towns are doing well, but you remain enslaved. Ricky, you represent the children's 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 children between 1725 and 1750. The Indians who used to live in the area have been driven out to make way for the expanding number of cities and towns in the British colony, but you still remain enslaved. You represent the children's 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 children born between 1750 and 1775. These British colonies have been on a way of independence, stating that all men are created equal, equal, but you remain enslaved. You represent the children's 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 children between 1775 and 1800. These British colonies are now a country, the United States of America. Many Native peoples have lost their lands as the United States has become bigger and bigger. The cotton gin has been invented, meaning that the farmers can grow lots more cotton and make lots more money. It takes lots of people to take care of the cotton. Many white people choose to get help they need with the cotton crop by buying more slaves. Thousands more. West African people, kidnapped from their homes, arrive in chains. You, are, you remain enslaved. You represent the children's 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 children. Born between 1800 and 1825. This country is twice as big as it was just a few years ago. Many white people are going west, looking for more places to build towns and cities. The cloth mills in the north are hungry for cotton. So farmers in the south grow more and more, needing more and more slaves. As more and more slaves arrive, you remain enslaved. You represent the children's 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 children. Born between 1825 and 1850. The Indian Removal Act of 1830 is pushing Indians from their land. Many Indians are slaughtered. In 1848, the United States takes a huge piece of Mexico and now rules over Spanish-speaking citizens. There are now groups of people writing and speaking against slavery, but you still remain enslaved. Uh, you represent the children's 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 children of the Jamestown slaves born between 1850 and 1875. The country has fought a civil war. The railroads have been built by Irish and Chinese workers. The Indian wars continue in the West, as Native people are forced into small areas of land called reservations. Slavery has been officially outlawed. You are no longer a slave, but people in power are working hard to limit your rights. You represent the children's 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 children, born between 1875 and 1900. There are now laws limiting who may come to this country and who may not. The Supreme Court has declared that whites and people of color ought to be separated. You are no longer a slave, but the law says you have fewer rights and privileges than white people. You represent all the children, 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 children. Between 1900 and 1925, a world war is fought at this time, and women are finally allowed to vote. You still live and work under laws that separate you from white people. You represent the children, 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 born between 1925 and 1950. The country suffers the Great Depression. When many people lose their jobs, the fights in the Second World War. Just like in the rest of society, people of color in the army have separated from the white people. Whole towns full of new homes are built after the war for returning soldiers. People of color are not allowed to live in those towns. We also have the children born between 1950 and 1975. This is the time of the Civil Rights Movement and of Martin Luther King. At long last, the children's 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 of the children of Jamestown have achieved equality under the law. You represent the generation of today, only the second to live in this country since slavery and segregation were outlawed. It's up to your generation to retell the story of the past, to understand the struggle and have dreams about the future. This is a story that the red Kwanzaa candles have to tell. It is a history that is not about explorers or wars or presidents or building cities. It is a story of a long, long wait for people of color to be treated fairly in the United States. As a white American, a German American, what is my relationship to these red candles, which honor not only the struggle for racial justice? What is my relationship to the green candles, which proclaim a dream of the future where there's justice for everyone? Why can't I light the candles? I, too, hope for a future where there's justice and fairness for all. I can't light the green candles for myself because I don't understand the red ones. I don't yet understand how my forebears fit into the history we just told. <clears throat> I need to begin to learn more about and claim the history those red candles represent. The red of struggle when my ancestors first came to this land. The red of courage as they made for themselves a place in America. The red of shame as I learned who they stepped over and on in order to gain that place. 
The Kwanzaa candles encourage me to learn what it means to be white in the United States. Learn what my forebears exchanged for a place in the American melting pot. I must search for and claim the red, the past, my past, before I can truly envision a fair world, a world of justice, equality, compassion, and human relations. Kwanzaa also encourages me to claim my present. I must come to know what personal gifts I bring to the struggle against injustice. What am I willing to do to help fight unfairness? Finally, the green candles of Kwanzaa tell me to claim hope, to envision a future where all people are part of the story. Sit quiet for a moment and remember, what is your family history? What are the stories of your grandparents and your great-grandparents? What do they have to tell you about justice and injustice, about opportunity, about triumph and about failure? If you do not hold these memories and stories in your mind and heart, feel the empty space where they should be. Think about why you do not know about your forebears' struggles, courage, and shame. Perhaps now is the time to resolve to fill in the empty space. Think about you today. What are your experiences, your gifts, your understandings? What is it that you're willing to commit in the struggle for justice for all people? Think about vision. What is your vision for tomorrow? What are your dreams for our beloved faith community? What are your dreams for the nation? Dr. Martin Luther King, in his famous 1963 speech, spoke of his dream for this nation. All of us have heard the famous words, I have a dream. He talked about black children and white children standing hand in hand in the second half of his speech. In the first half, he talked about history of unfairness toward African Americans in this country. We often skip over that part of the speech, listening only to I have a dream. We wear t-shirts and hang posters and sing songs and hold hands and say I have a dream. But the dream is the green part of the Kwanzaa message, the vision for a wonderful future. The part we skip over is the red part of Kwanzaa, the story of injustice. We skip the first half of Dr. King's speech and go straight for the second. I believe that we simply claim the green, the vision, without understanding the red, the struggle. We cannot read the I have a dream words of Dr. King without hearing the call to let justice roll down like the waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Dr. King's words, some 35 years later, still call out to me. They tell me that it is only when I have learned my own story, named and claimed all the events which brought me to this place. Only when I have uncovered and embraced for the past can I dream about the future, that I can emerge as a whole human being.